My name is Jerry Cowhut. I am the community liaison for Cathedral Village. And what I do in my position, I go out to various churches, libraries, community centers, and I provide health and wellness education. And Mary Angelo and I talked, and today's program is on wellness. And we talk about that because everybody's wellness philosophy or goal are not the same. It's up to you to make a really program that you can deal with and make it really work for you. I was saying that this started in 1960. So this is not new, 1960, but they did it. Why did they do it? Guess what? People were living longer. They never really thought of, you know, what does somebody do at age 60 or 65? Well, they probably died 62, 65, 70 years old. Now, thank goodness, we're living very good, great, wonderful lives at 70, 80, 90, 100 years old. You see all those celebrations on television when somebody is 100, 104, 105. So this has changed the way we do things and the way we feel. At the time, I'm talking about 1960, the life expectancy became a triumph Guess what? People were really living longer and they couldn't figure out why. Well, we were healthier. We went to doctors. We knew how to take care of ourselves. Women today will live to 81 years of age. Men today will live to about 76 years of age. So we outnumber you a little bit, sir. I'm sorry about that. But that's where we are today. We want to have happier, healthier, better lifestyles as we age. The wellness lifestyle fit the programs of just that, trying to live happier, healthier, better lifestyles. It fits this new philosophy. Since the early 60s, we have focused on how to do the important topic and how to do it well. That's what we want to find out. And that's what hopefully we're going to learn together today. And I am sure there are so many of you that can say you could be up here teaching what you do because we all know you just don't want to sit down. You don't want to watch the boob tube all the time. You've got to be involved and love life. If you, I already said that, if you go to the grocery store, drug store, any places that sell magazines, the wellness philosophy is out there. People want to learn how to stay well. How do you do it? It's just not natural. So we're going to talk about that today. The difference between health and wellness. Health is a state of physical being. You can take your blood pressure, you can take your temperature as we all did this morning coming in here. You could do all of those sort of checks and balances and that's all good. Oxygen concentration, you know, now they have those little things that when you go to your doctor and you're doing a checkup, they put a little thing on your finger and and you're wondering, you know, okay, what is it today? I hope it's 99 because I feel pretty good. So we do all of those things to make sure that we stay well, but that's the physical component. There is so much more to what we do today. You know, if you're playing, let's say, uh, as an example, if you're going to for a walk, and you're going for a walk with a friend, you're not putting that little oxygen thing on your finger, you're just enjoying it. You're breathing fresh air. But that's what we're talking about. The physical signs are so different than just the wellness. 70 million people will be over the age of 65 by 2030. 70 million people. Well, I don't know how many after all these political things that you're seeing on television. Doesn't matter, Democrat or Republican, it's just driving most people crazy. Turning off that tube is probably the best thing to do for a few days. Anyway, wellness then becomes a way of life supported by your doctor and your nurse. So you don't wanna do something that may not be exactly perfect for you. What is an unhealthy lifestyle? Well, I guess we know people who smoke, that certainly is unhealthy. So we wanna eliminate smoking for sure. And that's something that really over the years, people have just realized how bad it is to smoke, but there are still smokers and they, they smoke, there's nothing you can do about it. They're in that way of life and just hope that they change at some point in time. Lack of exercises is, exercise is wonderful. With COVID, that's really been a problem because in the early stages of COVID, 
where were we? We were in lockdown. You know, if you have a two-story house, it's good. You could climb the steps to get some exercise. But lack of exercise is really unhealthy for everyone. Eating unhealthy foods, you know. Sometimes you want to just, you don't want to cook or you're tired of cooking or you don't want to cook for one person or two people. You just want to get out where well, you can't go to dining. So, you know, now dining is open a little bit. But it's really how you eat, what you eat, and also when you eat. Do you have three meals a day or do you snack throughout the day? Uh, there is increase in alcohol consumption. And again, a glass of wine before dinner, that's fine. But it, those people that really drink a lot and almost to the point that um, it's actually drinking too much. Uh, isolation and lack of transportation. Oftentimes, it is really a challenge to get around. If you don't drive anymore, you know, is, are you going to Uber? Well, Uber does get expensive, but these are things that you have to consider um, because there is lack of transportation. But if I were to say something to you about any of these things, isolation to me is the most important thing. We need people. Remember Barbara Streisand? Well, I was a fond person of her in the 60s and 70s. People need people. I always remember that song because I loved her when she was singing it. And I remember that song. Little did I know that I was going to use her name from the 60s and 70s. When you talk about isolation, we need people. And that people can also be a telephone call, which we will talk about. The whole person wellness model is really important. And that's the model that we use. And in the handouts that I provided, I break down the whole person wellness. The model includes six dimensions. And I'll go through each dimension. But they are the physical, your activities, your emotional, how you deal with stress, spiritual, and it doesn't have to mean a church, it could be mindfulness, it could be lots of different things, but a time to sit down and reflect on your daily programs. Um, intellectual, do you read a book? Do you go to a program? Well, you, you guys are doing just a little bit of everything here. Uh, social, and it's very important. And I use, because the philosophy uses occupational and volunteerism. So almost in this same thing, because if you're no longer working or employed, then you want to look at, well, I don't work. I don't want to go back to work. So what can I do? Volunteerism is absolutely wonderful. Now we're going to break each one of these down, as I said before, physical wellness. Physical wellness includes your responsibility to do this. If you are going to walk every morning and you're going to try that, because you have to do something. You, you feel that you have to do something. You're sitting too long, you're doing X, Y, Z. So you have to say, I can do this. Because if not, your program is not going to work. It's wonderful to join any time, any kind of walking programs, group exercise. Yoga is wonderful, wonderful. Pilates, ballroom dancing. Think out of your normal things that you would like to do. Anything that you can do. And I just say, just stand up between commercial breaks. <laughs> now I'm really saying that's pr really pretty basic, but if you can't do anything else, that's a good thing. Guess what? Commercial breaks are every 10 minutes. So if you're watching something for 30 minutes, you're standing up about three times and that's a good thing. And you move your arms, your legs, everything. Take steps whenever you can, stairs whenever appropriate, standing while preparing meals. Or some people, you know, if they're cooking potatoes, they'll sit down and sort of clean the potatoes and then slice them. But standing is something that will help. I already said, take TV breaks during commercials. Park your car further away from the store. Now that sounds great, but then you have all these groceries and you have to lug. But these are just things that you can think of. If you're going to, let's say, CVS, and um, you know, you're gonna just have, maybe you pick up your prescription there, you're not gonna have lots of bags to carry. It might be good to park just a little bit away and still safe. And also, if you're going during nighttime, watch those lights. Physical activity, stay safe and avoid injury. I always say, if you're gonna start something like a walking regimen, talk to your doctor about that because you might think, well, I can do that. I used to walk when I was 40 years old. Well, now you're 60 years old and you're not walking or you have to have clearance. 
So I always say, talk to your doctor and find out about that. The health benefits you gain from being active is far greater than the chances of getting hurt. So if you're walking on safe grounds and it's light, it's daytime, and there's you know where to walk, you know your neighborhood and everything, it's really a good thing for you to do. If you have not been active in a while, start slowly. I always tease people and say, well, I had a friend that wanted to start walking. And so she had this vision that she was going to be able to walk every morning at 6 a.m., five days a week. And like, hey, who are you walking with? Well, I'm walking by myself because I have to really walk early because I work and I'm going to do it at 6 a.m. Well, now, is that practical? Because the first day, 6 a.m., it was raining out. So she couldn't walk that day. The next day, she wakes up 6 a.m. She has all her stuff ready to hop into and she didn't feel good. She had a headache. So by the time she got walking, it was third day because maybe 6 a.m. was not the right time to start walking. So you have to be really realistic uh, when you're doing any kind of activity. Uh, learn about the different types of and amounts of activity that are just right for you. Build up time you spend before switching activities. So, you know, I'm talking to you about all of this and you're listening uh, to me about what I'm saying about walking and all of that. And then, okay, so you did it for two weeks. Well, that's kind of boring. I'm gonna go into something else. Really write down a plan of what you're going to do to stay active. Wonderful emotional wellness. It's really important for you to be aware of how you're feeling. If you're angry, you really want to say you're angry. If you're happy, you laugh. Those things are so important. You can't just think of something that brings some sadness to you and then put it back, put it away in your brain. You don't want to think about that. It doesn't make you feel good. But you have to understand your emotions. Include the degree in which one feels positive and enthusiastic about oneself and life. If you're really like down and you're not too enthusiastic about where you are in your life, that's a thought process, which is a good thought process because you want to have balance in your emotions. So if things aren't going well, it's good for you to think about it. And then you say, well, why isn't it going well? Maintain satisfying relations with others. That is so key. You know, you're not feeling really emotionally happy and you sit down and you're thinking, oh, well, I wish I could see my children. They're all so far away. You're down, you're gloomy. I don't want to use the word depressed, but you feel sad. So don't stay that way. I mean, it's okay to stay that way. Pick up the phone and call somebody and just say, you know what? I am just really, I'm Debbie Downer right now. I needed to talk to a friendly person on the other line. But always remember who that person is, because she can bring you right down. She or he can bring you right down to like a feeling that why did I even call? It's better to be aware of your feelings and accept them. Don't deny them. So if you don't feel happy, just say, why am I so down today? Or I am so happy day, today. I heard, heard my grandchild, daughter, and she's going got the college that she wanted to go to. I'm happy. I have to write her a note to say how happy we are and proud that she got into the school that she wanted to go to. Um, and then try to, if you can, manage stress in your life. That's a tough one because we all feel stress differently. We all react to stress differently. S someone might say, oh, I went to the grocery store and I had the worst person to wait on me. She, he or no, she never smiled. She sort of threw the stuff in the bags. She was not connected to her job at all. That made my day really awful. Well, guess what? She ha was having a problem. You don't want that problem to make you feel disgusted or down. You realize that she might have really had a bad day. She might have children at home sick. Things happen. So you have to always try to understand the other person. And again, managing stress spiritual wellness. Now, again, I said, it doesn't have to be religion. It can be a way of just stepping back and just thinking. Religion or meditation provides that quiet place. So if you're not religious or you, have, you go to a place for your religion, which is very common, um, and 
right now you're thinking about something that makes you say, just sit down and meditate. Meditation is wonderful. If you're not, I'm sure you've all done it before, but all you have to do is sit down, relax, sit down in a nice chair, sort of close your eyes, take a half hour. That's meditation. It's not rocket science. You take a half hour and it gives you time to recoup. You can think about something that was is very nice, uh, a nice um, event that is coming up and you're looking forward to going to that event. That we call it mindfulness. That just takes you away from the day to day that you're you're doing and puts you in another another space. And mindfulness is just so easy to do. It's better to think about the meaning of life for ourselves, but be tolerant of other beliefs. Intolerance can become negative. Intolerant people can be negative. And what happens with negativity? You get right down there in a very not good place to be. Negativity is hard to get out of. Learned negativity, meaning you're more of a negative person, really becomes stressful for you. And you don't even realize that the stress is being caused by the negativity that you're experiencing. I always say live each day that is consistent to your beliefs. It's you. It's your day. You might be very religious. You may not be. But it's your day. Live it the way you want to, as long as you are safe and comfortable. But you have to be true to ourselves. You can't be say, saying, I really like X, Y, Z, and I have a good life, good friends, good family. Be realistic. What might be bothering you? And try to get help if it is. Intellectual wellness. Well, a well person cherishes intellectual growth and stimulation. So you are intellectually well people because you come to this event to learn something. And I hope I'm sharing enough information to you that you are picking up some tips that I'm talking about. So intellectual wellness might be taking a class, join a reading group. Reading is so, so, so wonderful. Stretch and challenge your mind. Curiosity is good. You know, you, you sort of think of things and then I'm the type of person that if I see something that I really like, I just enjoy what I like. I'm not really that curious about why I like it. That's kind of a person I am. I'm in the moment, but it is, you know, curiosity is very good. Find out why you're happy in that moment. Become aware of current issues and ideas. And I think the reading group is so, so important. I know um, we do, I work with I'm an Alzheimer's specialist. And one of the things that we do for people that have Alzheimer's disease, when they're being admitted to either an adult day program or to a facility spent just exactly for care of a person with Alzheimer's disease, after that first day and getting situated into the unit or the place that they're going to be for a while, you sort of sit down with that person and you find out if they can read. If an Alzheimer's patient can read, it is wonderful because then you keep them reading. So you don't go to a person and say, you know, can, can you read? Well, if they have Alzheimer's, they probably don't even know what you're talking about. But what we used to do is give the person um, sheets of paper and you explain to that person, you know, I really need your help. I want to see if you can read this sheet of paper that I have, maybe the alphabet. Or is the number B, is the, is the letter B large enough? And he's looking at you and then you go to the next one. Can you read the letter B? See, you're asking, you're stimulating that person. Yes, he can read. It shows. Then you follow up with like words and things like that. If you know that that person can read, the next day you are reading with that person. You have them in a reading group. That is how important reading is wonderful. Reading stimulates your brain. And sometimes, you know, you've read a book or you're reading a book and you can be driving somewhere and you think, all of a sudden you're thinking about the book you just read, a line in the book or something that made you feel really comfortable about that book. So reading stays in your brain and you just think you're reading a good book but it stays there for a while. Social wellness. 
we are, inter we are interdependent on others. Take an active part in improving communication. Well, what does that mean? You can text, that's communication, email, pick up the phone, write a letter. Letter writing is so, so important. And it is something that nobody does today. But if you do, uh, I read a wonderful article about letter writing. And the article actually discussed why people just don't write letters. Well, they'd rather pick up a phone or send a text. But if you actually write a letter, short, just wanted to say, hi, how are you? It's been a while. I haven't seen you. I know that you're really busy with your kids. Just send a hi. I'm just sending you a hi and hope all is well. Three sentences. Wow, doesn't that feel good? You put a 55 cent stamp on it, it goes. All of a sudden, you get a phone call. Your card meant so much to me. People have forgotten to write letters. Believe me, this article that I read, she started this after New Year's. Hadn't thought about letter writing. She decided she was going to write a letter a day, 365 letters. She did every day, short little letters. And I said, how in the world did she know 365 people? Well, she sent thank you notes to, the, to her hairdresser. She sent a thank you note to somebody that did something for her. She got 365 letters and she lived in a small town and she knew the grocer. She knew the beautician. She knew everybody. So people would say, I got your note. Thank you. It made her feel so good. So anyway, I'm talking about the art of letter writing. It is gone, but you can resurrect it. I just said that about that. And trying to live in harmony. Try to be happy any way you can and not create environments that are not good or happy for you. Occupational or volunteering wellness. Uh, I say this because we combined it, because if you no longer are employed, then you need to know what else to do. Do you use your talents at work? Find fulfillment in your work? And does your work have meaning? I can say what I do really has meaning. I enjoy doing programs. I enjoy connecting with people. I connect with you per, uh, physically, but also we're taping this, so it's online also. That makes me feel good, very good. So you have to always increase physical activity, greater engagement in local community. Wow, Chestnut Hill, this area is so wonderful for things that you can do for other people. And that's what makes life really important. It's your connection to other people feeling optimistic about life, improve memory capacity. You know, a happy brain, happy brain is a good brain. You know, you think, well, what's happiness? What, why does my brain have to feel happy? Your brain has to feel happy because when you're happy, that gray matter just flips around and increases. It's good. Happy people have hopefully better brain capacity. And it also, if you are volunteering, it increased your self-esteem. Most people that volunteer say, I have received so much more than I have given. It's a good thing. Volunteering is just absolutely wonderful. This is good. How do you develop a wellness plan? Well, a wellness plan is really about your attitude. You know, you, you decided you're going to do, you, you're going to walk because you heard this Jerry Coates said, physical activity is really good. So you're going to develop this plan. And some days, as I said, may not work out. If your plan is to walk and it's raining, well, don't get all bent out of shape. Just put it back up. It may be really nice at five o'clock. Stay motivated and connect with a friend or coworker. There's nothing better than walking with a friend. Why? Because that friend is going to get up at eight o'clock and be already dressed for you. She's outside, you know she's there, and it motivates you. You can't keep your friend waiting outside the door. You have to get up, get dressed, and go. So it's really nice if you can find a walking buddy. You want to think about one thing you would like to change, and that's what we're going to talk about. One thing in your life that you might like to change. It could be physical activity. It could be emotional and say, well, I'm taking so much in about the sad things I'm hearing. Maybe I want to work on the emotional balance. Make your goal achievable. So I already said about walking, 
Can you really walk every morning at 6 a.m., five days a week? Can you go from a couch potato to world-class athlete? Remember that. If you're really in front of that television, and all of a sudden you're going to walk a mile a day, be practical. That's not going to work. Can you look like you did when you were 20 years old? And then I say, why would we want to? <laughs> or how could we? So that's something else. Make small progressive goals that are achievable. As I said, you're not going to say, I'm going to walk every day at 6 a.m. I'm going to walk a mile. Well, what you're going to do probably, which would be better, I'm going to walk uh, three times a week at eight o'clock in the morning. I'm going to walk in the neighborhood and I'm going to do three blocks. <laughs> That's not a mile, right? So then you're comfortable. Maybe you did it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. By Friday, you're already up to five blocks. So whatever you do, you make them achievable goals. Because if your goal was to walk a mile three times a week, you're going to you're going to put your sneakers away by Friday and say, I'm never doing it again. So you know what you can achieve and your body and your brain are going to tell you what you can do. Climb the six dimensions of wellness. And this is the holistic model that we have been, model that we have been talking about and that you have handouts on. It is the personal responsibility. Nobody can develop a wellness plan for you. It's what you can do and what you want to do. The enrichment of life through work and volunteerism, talked about that already. The benefits of regular physical activity. Healthy eating habits are wonderful. You have to eat three meals a day, quality food, vegetables, fruits and vegetables. Now, I love the advertisement that they show you about the vegetables and fruit that are in a pill. <laughs> Have you seen it? It's like the craziest thing in the world. They have these beautiful fruits and vegetables. They chop them all up and they're red, yellow, pink, blue, and everything. All of a sudden you get this little tablet that you can take two times a day and you get your fruits and vegetables. I'd rather eat an apple than take a pill. Um, how can a person contribute to the environment and their community? The environment is so important today. I know along the Wissahick and they're always asking for volunteers and they call it volunteer cleanup day. And you don't have to be a real walker. You just meet at a certain spot and there's about 10 or 15 people on the walk with you. And all of a sudden you're walking and you're meeting people, it's nice. And you're picking up trash, you wear gloves, you're picking up uh, like little branches that are in the way for a walking path. And it's, you're getting out in the, in the sunshine and fresh air. So try to think of things that really would help that and sharing your gifts with others. Well, if you have a gift, if you can paint, just think about volunteering to help someone to, to paint. Think about reading to children. The library is a wonderful place to volunteer. They're always looking for kids that go to a daycare and all of a sudden, uh, once a week, they go to the library for a reading session. Well, who's doing that reading session? It's volunteers. So think about the kinds of things that you're interested in doing. Because if, if you were a teacher or if you love reading to your grandchildren or nieces and nephews, then maybe that's a good volunteer program for you to get involved in. The wellness approach, does your program or approach help to have you achieve your potential? You know, you've made a plan and I, I always go in walking, that's an easy one. You've made a plan. Do you feel comfortable about, about the plan? because it is going to help you physically. Does it address the multidisciplinary approach? Well, if you're walking with a friend, okay, so you're walking, that's one thing that's really good for you. You're talking to a friend, which is getting you out of isolation. You're connecting with that friend. And probably along the way, you're making a plan with that person to perhaps meet next week for lunch. Socialization is so key. Does this assist the positive qualities and strength of your plan. So wellness is just not thinking about, well, I'm going to eat better. I'm going to be more active. It's a plan that, cre that creates not only a walking plan, but it includes all aspects of physical, social, socialization, et cetera, that we already talked about. Some suggested well, wellness tips. We already said, do not use tobacco. 
none. Your dietary fat should be less than 20%. And that's really pretty moderate. So you don't eat most of your foods. Seafood is wonderful for you. And you know, it's nice to say seafood, who can afford seafood anymore? But salmon is always a, a good thing you can uh, buy and it's generally, you can get it on sale. You wanna keep your vital signs. Blood pressure less than 120 over 80. That's really a goal. And you know, when I first started this, it was okay to be like 140 over 70. So now they're recommending that, you know, that 140 over seven, but you really wanna get it down if you can to a 120 over 80. Your cholesterol lowering. You know, again, we're looking at what they're recommending now. Cholesterol level of under 180 is what's really good. Your daily food consumption, four servings of vegetables, three of fruit, and two whole grains. So start thinking wellness is just not um, being happy. Wellness is, includes all of those wellness uh, attributes. This one I love. Make laughter and fun a priority. Enjoy yourself. Anticipating a fun or positive uh, experience can be a health benefit. So if you know you're going to have, let's say you're going to visit your grandchildren and you're so happy because you bought them something, not a Christmas gift, but something that they can do outdoors and you cannot wait to see them and to give them that, that gift. Well, you're thinking about that all week. What does that do? You're happy that week because you have planned a nice event conversation each week with the person who cares for you. That's really significant. Uh, the way that we live today, so many family members are not close anymore. You know, before we used to sort of live in the same neighborhood as our family. So if you had like a Christmas event, you just all sort of walked to the other person's house, you enjoyed it. Now people, because of job positions, et cetera, they're sort of further away and it's not as easy to be able to communicate with people. So you know these things are all difficult, but conversation each week with the person who cares for you. Take quiet breaks. We talked about mindfulness, prayer. Prayer is just absolutely wonderful. Classical music, they say, brightens your brain. Classical music. If you're driving and you're driving in your car and you have a CD, classical music is good. A good trombone, Seeing, playing jazz is really good for your brain. Love and care for yourself as do you want others to love and care for you. And, you know, if you love yourself, you're going to love other people. Setting a goal. And this is what I say. A dream written down with a date becomes a goal. A goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. A plan backed by action makes your dreams come true. So it's a three-step step process. A dream written down, a goal broken down into steps, a plan backed by action makes your dreams come true. The wellness different. Health is a state of body. Remember I talked about your blood pressure, your temperature, that's health. Wellness is a state of being. So two things, I want to talk about wellness and talking about a person that I knew well, and she was an 81 year old female that used to live in New York City. She had a wonderful apartment in New York City. Her daughter, only child, um, had to move away from the city with her husband and two children because her husband got a job in Delaware. So. She was really alone. She used to love, they'd always go back and forth, sharing, cooking, cleaning, whatever the, whatever the chore and the laughter was, they were together. Well, that family moved down to Delaware. She was devastated. The, she was just devastated. The daughter was unhappy too, but the one thing she had in her life always was yoga. She used to wake up every morning, go to yoga, come back, have a cup of coffee and her day was started. She loved yoga. 
She had friends there. And some of her friends, not every week or every day, would say, let's catch each other up for some lunch. Or did you hear there's a great sale at Macy's? Let's go shopping. So she had that physical and emotional connection every day for years. She loved it. That's what made her life. It made her life because she lived alone. And then when her daughter and grandkids came, she thought she died and went to heaven. So what happened? Her, her family moved to Delaware. Her husband got another job. And well, she was sad, but her daughter said, we'll still come up to see you because Delaware's not that far. So she had two grandchildren and the grandchildren, they moved down when the kids were like about three and five years old. All of a sudden, the grandchildren became involved with everything. Now they're eight, 10 years old. They're into scouts. They're into activities at school. They're sports, et cetera. They couldn't get up to New York City anymore because of the, the constraints of family. Well, she was just miserable. So her daughter said, mom, come down and live near us. Oh my God, not me. I mean, I'm not gonna live near you. First of all, I have all my friends are here. Uh, my apartment is great. I go to yoga every morning. Well, she said, you could do it here. I don't want to do yoga anywhere else, but where I am, where I live now. Well, push comes to shove in about three months of nagging her mom. She finally moved to Delaware. So she moved to a retirement community in Delaware. Oh, she was so, she was so unhappy because she didn't want to move to begin with, but she wanted to cooperate. Her daughter was telling her the truth. They couldn't come to see her. So she said, okay, so she's in this retirement community and she's not happy. So first night in a retirement community, you're gonna have dinner with a group of people. So this community was really nice. And the new person was situated with three other kind of people with like personalities, like interests. That's what we do in retirement communities. You want a person to feel really comfortable. So her first night at dinner, you know, she goes and they're just saying, oh, we're so happy. I'm so glad to meet you. You're gonna love it here. Everything's great. Well, she was sitting there like this, you know, and she meant it, I don't want to be here. So that was day one, day two, day three, I should say night three, night two, night three, because it was just not a happy experience for her. So finally, the ladies, three ladies got together and said, what are we going to do? She's miserable. And, you know, you could tell she probably is a very nice person, but she's just miserable. So they decided to have an intervention. <laughs> so the three ladies and the fourth person at the table said, they said, you know, we've noticed that you don't seem happy and we wanna help you. you she says, you can't help me. I mean, I'm not happy. I didn't wanna leave. I didn't wanna leave my apartment. I'm not happy, but it's, this is such a lovely place. She said, I don't care. And they said, well, what, can, what will make it better? Well, she said, you know, one thing, I used to do yoga every day. Now, nothing. My body just feels aches. It aches for some activity. And she said, my apartment's too small that I have. I can't get a mat out. I'm not motivated. So they said, well, wait a minute now. So she said, we'll meet you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to talk to the activity director. You need to do something to pep you up. She was a great woman. And she said, you know, you're just always so sad and you're making us sad. We don't like eating with you. Trying to like motivate her a little bit. So 10 o'clock, they all go to the activity director. And they said, you know, isn't there any place that Mary can do exercise and do yoga? So the activity director, well, she said, I don't know. Nobody's ever asked me that. Oh, there's a studio with mirrors all around. Nobody uses it. Let's go see it. So the four or five of them now go to the uh, studio and the three women say, look, look, you can do, you can do yoga here. Nobody will bother you. So she says, well, I don't want, you know, I don't know. And they said, well, look, we're giving you the choice to do this. You better do it. So she said, okay. Next morning, she puts on her yoga outfit. They even gave her a key because nobody uses this room at all. She opens it up, turns the lights on. She started to do yoga. Oh, she said after that, I feel like myself again. So then dinner comes. 
and they didn't want to push her too much. She said, thank you so much. She said, it's not exactly what I'm used to, but my body feels so much better. So they said, oh, that's so good. Are you going to go back? Oh, I'm going to do it tomorrow too. She does it the second day. Same thing. She reports at dinner. I love it. I found myself. Thank God, because I was going to leave. One lady says, can you teach me the yoga? And she said, well, I don't teach. Well, can I come? She said, yeah. Next day, she comes. So now there's two people doing yoga. Next day, there's four people doing yoga. By two weeks, she had a yoga class of 20 people, and she was teaching it. She was so happy. Look at that. One thing changed this person's life. So naturally, the executive director and everybody was so happy that they have this yoga class. So they put this little bleep in the local newspaper about having yoga taught at this uh, facility. And 20 people, they love it. They do it every day. Well, what happened with that little blurb in the newspaper? It was picked up, as they say, AP wire photo to New York City. Well, the executive director gets a phone call from Matt Lauer. And Matt Lauer says, you know, we picked up this article about you have an 81-year-old woman teaching yoga to other people that are the same age. Yes, they do that. It's wonderful. They love it. Can she come to New York City and we'll interview her? This is wonderful news. An 81-year-old lady teaching yoga. So the executive director said, well, sure, we'll have her up there. So Matt Lauer said, bring her, the activity director, because that was in the little article, and, um, and, and her daughter. So the three of them, four of them by this time, get into New York City. They stay in this lavish hotel, and they have this lavish dinner to eat that night. And the only thing she had to do the next morning was go in the Today Show. She wasn't nervous because she always, all she had to do was do a yoga class. She did this yoga class and she was fabulous. Matt Lauer, was, she was teaching him how to do it. He, and I'm sure it was fake, but anyway, he could not reach his toes. So everybody was saying, look how young you are. You're out of shape. Well, anyway, this was so amazing. Here, a person that moved from New York City down to Delaware happy, unhappy, unhappy, started to teach a yoga class, she became a star. So it doesn't take much. And just think about it in your daily life. It does not take much to do something that really will change your life. And I think that's what wellness is all about. So another thing that we could do, uh, when you get home tonight, jot down on a sheet of paper, well, you divide a sheet eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, divide it in half. On that sheet of paper, you're going to jot down things you like to do. And you don't have to read. I mean, it's really easy to remember things you like to do. Just think of that. Well, I did mine. I love to cook. I love to shop. I like to read a good book. And I like to exercise. Kind of bland little things, but they're things that I really like to do. But then the other part of it is, things you stay away from. This is me. I stay away from playing bridge. Oh my God. I went to one bridge. I, mean, I thought it's going to die before I got out of there. I am obviously not a bridge player. Using a new way to arrive at a familiar place. I will drive my car and turn right, turn left, turn right. I never explore another way of getting to any place. So I'm going to, I've tried that. I've tried to get to the same point, but using different direction. Uh, take swim lessons. Well, I'm not a swimmer. And when I married my husband, well, I didn't conceal it from him, but I shared that I, what, I couldn't swim. And he said, what do you mean you can't swim? I said, I can't swim. I've tried lessons. I can't swim. Well, he was a wonderful swimmer from Northeast Philadelphia. And he thought, well, I'll teach you. Well, never, you can't. If, I could not learn how to swim. So for all these years, you know, we're married 51 years. He's never taught me how to swim. So that was on my list. If there was a miracle person to teach me how to swim, it would be good. So that's all I'm saying. Just 
things you like to do and the things that you stay away from. Think about learning, for me, how to play bridge. You know, it's interesting. It's great for your brain. Take a different way of driving somewhere. And I have to take swim lessons. Well, I don't think that one's going to happen. But anyway, that's what I want you to do when you go home. Think about things that would be helpful to you that you stay away from. Because not only is it motivate you, but it also is so good for your brain. Now, let's see. What's going to take? Yes. I am going to be here next next month and I will be teaching you the healthy brain. <laughs> so, you know, you could have a healthy brain or not, but you're going to learn more about a healthy brain. So that will be next month, December 3rd. So thank you. Does anybody have any questions that I can help you with? Well, thank you. It's, it's a topic that is opens to so many different ideas and it makes you think about what you can do and or also, guess what? What you should do. You know, you have got to get out. You got to socialize. Um, I know I just work part time and I really appreciate a day off, you know, and then I thought, well, if I had two days off, I'd probably not get anything done because I sort of relax and maybe cook a meal that I wouldn't normally cook if I had time or something. But it is really important and interesting to say, plan your day, plan your day. Any other questions? Comments? Yes. I'd like to know what, well, there's only the three of us and she and I know each other for years. So we'll just see you now because it's left. <laughs> but um, the things that uh, may become today or things that you do that were already uh, within within your discussion, if, if you wanted to share. Well, well that's something I think we all want to say as well as we can as we get older. And, uh, you know, yes, you know a lot of these things, but it's always good to hear it again. Just have a refresher and get new ideas. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a good question. The question was, you know, why did you come and did you get, gain anything from the information? And, and the answer was, if they couldn't hear you, it's, well, I knew it, I knew a lot of them, but it just helps to remind you how, to, how you should be, how you should treat your life, how you should treat yourself as a person to stay involved, because now you are, have the opportunity to be involved. You know, if you wait, maybe five years, maybe you're going to be able to drive or maybe you're going to have an issue with walking or something like that. So, you know, this is the time for you to do it. And it's the time for you also to encourage a friend, a family member to do it with you because that socialization is so important. Just having that other ears to hear you, especially if you're talking about something sad that you really didn't want to think about, but it's good to get it out. It's good to ventilate sometimes. And you need you need that, like Barbara Streisand said, you need that other person. People are important. For the first time in, in my life, in my whole life, and I'm 84 years old. Okay. And on the way over, he said to me, Rachel, how are you? How are you really? Because my mother died at 102 in April. She's up there this year. You know, and, um, so I, this is a very, very new experience for me. And uh, I say I am grateful that I have things to do, that I have to take care of some things that she left. I have to take care of some things that I need to be taking care of. Uh -huh. And I live in a cooperative uh, situation, and I have involved myself in some of the committees. Because after taking care of all the business, then what am I going to do? Yeah. So it is very important for me to have ideas as to, well, what can you do? What, what is it you like to do? And I enjoy that part in particular because sometimes you think, well, what am I going to do? But you don't think of, well, what is it, what is it I like to do? Right. Because that's what you should do. That's exactly right. It's not some place where, where you don't, um, you're not going to be comfortable. Right. That's really a good point because I love to paint. I had I took um, oil painting classes ages ago. I'm not good, but I love it. 
And I think that's what I, you know, everybody has these same challenges. Here I'm teaching the course and I think to myself, I should try to find a, a course that teaches just, just oil painting because I loved it so much. And we do have um, a painting that I did hanging up only because my husband feels sorry for me. So he hung it up, got it framed, but I love doing it. And I, I thought to myself, that's what I should do. I should get in it. So it's, you know, here I'm talking about it, but it's hard for everybody to get into that. What's next? What's next for you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming.